I call this meeting of the Williamsburg James City County School Board to order. The uh, first item of business, the Pledge of Allegiance. If we could please rise. <coughs> Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <clears throat> Ms. Serzik, can you take the roll, please? Dr. Beers. Here. Ms. Cook. Here. Ms. Hummel. Here. Ms. Minor. Here. Mrs. Taylor. Here. Mrs. Young. Here. Mr. Kelly. Here. Thank you. Um, get a motion for certification of closed session, please. I certify that to the best of each member's knowledge, the Williamsburg James City County School Board, while in closed session, discussed only public business matters lawfully exempted from open meeting requirements as stated in Virginia law, and that only such public matters as were identified in the motion convening the closed meeting were heard, discussed, or considered. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Thank you, Ms. Serza. Ms. Cook. Aye. Ms. Hummel. Aye. Ms. Minor. Aye. Mrs. Taylor. Aye. Mrs. Young. Yes. Dr. Beers. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Thank you. 4.01, approval of the agenda. Can I have a motion for approval of the agenda, please? Mr. Chair, I'd like to move approval to, of the agenda as presented with the following amendment. I'd like to add item 9.02, discussion of engaging services of a super, superintendent search firm. Okay. Thank you. Second. Thank you. Any discussion? Ms. Serza? Ms. Hummel. Aye. Ms. Minor. Aye. Mrs. Taylor. Aye. Mrs. Young. Aye. Dr. Beers. Aye. Ms. Cook. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Thank you. 5.01, announcement superintendent's report. Dr. Heron. Good evening, Mr. Chair. As you know, demolition of the one-story portion of James Blair has started. To capture the activity, we've placed two cameras on the site to live stream the demolition and construction of the new middle school. To see the streams, visit our website, wjccschools.org, and click on the fourth middle school link. The first day of school is September 6th, and we are focused on final preparations. This afternoon, senior staff assisted with the distribution of school supplies and over 150 backpacks to students at a Race the Needs Center. Parents, if you haven't registered your child for school, we invite you to do so as soon as possible. If you're unsure which school your child will attend, visit the division website, wjccschools.org, and click on bus info and school zones link. Bus pickup times and drop off times will be available later in August. Next week, we welcome new teachers to WJCC on Monday, August 22nd to begin their orientation and all other teachers report to their schools next Wednesday. We are also excited to launch the first WJCC professional learning conference for over 800 participants on August 25th. Most of the presenters at this conference will be our own teacher leaders presenting to their peers. And finally, we officially kick off the year for all employees with convocation on Friday, August 26th. Uh, we are ready and looking forward to a great school year. Those are all of the announcements I have this evening, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Dr. Hearner. Is there any announcements for, from, from board members this evening? <clears throat> Moving on, 6.01 citizens' comments. Dr. Beers? It is <clears throat> at this point in our meeting where citizens are invited to address the board. Those citizens desiring to speak have submitted speaker cards to the clerk prior to the start of tonight's meeting. These speakers are asked to come to the podium when their names are called, state their names for the record, and direct their comments to the chair of the board. It is, it is the board's interest and desire that all comments are heard and respected. Hence, citizens are asked not to engage in applauding, verbal outbursts, or any other type of demonstrations during the presentation. Personal matters are not considered in public meetings. Therefore, the board requests that all speakers refrain from making reference to specific individuals in any form or fashion. Though the board does not, may not respond to your comments, your comments are heard and appreciated. Each speaker is allocated three minutes to make their presentation, and the board asks that you respect this time limitation. Also, please be 
reminded that no time may be yielded to another speaker. Your acceptance and adherence to these guidelines will be greatly appreciated. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My directions are concluded. Thank you, Dr. Beers. Mrs. Cook? Lafayette Jones, please. My name is Lafayette Jones. Greetings, Mr. Chair, ladies and gentlemen of the board, and fellow attendee attendees. My comments this afternoon apply to uh, the renaming of schools in the area. I concur and fully support the proposed policy statement for naming schools, except for paragraph three. Paragraph three needs modification. The qualification that an individual be deceased for at least 10 years is arbitrary, capricious, and self-limiting. The determination or primary factor should be that the individual is deceased. The paragraph is self-limiting because it would automatically exclude some of our most notable citizens, such as Dr. Dr. George Johanny, a noted physician and community leader who died in 2012, and Mr. Marion O. Elke Smith, a well-known farmer, local historian, and noted public speaker who died in 2014. Both of these gentlemen were model citizens and made significant contributions to the Williamsburg James City County community. Additionally, the clause absent extraordinary circumstances needs to be removed because it invalidates the paragraph's intended purpose. My next comment regards the change in names of the school. Also, in a recent news article, it was stated that state election laws prevents the renaming of any polling place 60 days before an election. So the board had to either rename the school by early September, rename it in the middle of next school year, or wait until 2017-2018 school year. This interpretation of law may be an error. According to the Code of Virginia, Title 24.2, Elections, Paragraph 306, which states that no change in any local election district, precinct, or polling place shall be enacted within 60 days next preceding any general election. Notice shall be published prior to enactment in a newspaper having a general circulation in the election district or precinct once a week for two successive weeks. The published notice shall state where descriptions and maps of the proposed boundary and polling place changes may be inspected. After a thorough review of this paragraph and subsequent supporting paragraphs in the Code of Virginia, it would appear that this 60-day requirement applies only when a physical change in the physical location of the polling place is initiated and does not relate to name changes. That concludes my presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Okay, thank you. That brings us to the consent agenda. Can I get a motion for approval of 7.01, approval of minutes from the following meetings, July 12th uh, and August 2nd, 2016, 7.02 financial report and monthly bills and payroll July 2016 7.03 personnel actions as presented tonight 7.04 middle school laptop program 7.05 Virginia juvenile detention center statewide secondary online course curriculum 7.06 local plan for the gifted 2016 2021 7.07 2016 2017 meal price increase 7.08, revised policy BBFA, board member conflict of interest and member ethics. 7.09, revised policy BCF, advisory committees to the board. And 7.10, revised policy BDDG minutes. Is there a motion for approval of the consent agenda? Mr. Chair, I make a motion that we approve the consent agenda as presented. Is there a second? Second. Move and second and approve the consent agenda. Ms. Serza? Ms. Minor? Aye. Mrs. Taylor? Aye. Mrs. Young? Aye. Dr. Beers? Aye. Ms. Cook? Aye. Ms. Hummel? Aye. Mr. Kelly? Aye. Thank you. That takes us to our action items, 8.01. Can I get a motion to approve the renaming, the process for school renaming as presented in the superintendent's <coughs> memo? Mr. Chair, I move approval of item 8.01, process for school renaming. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? Do we, do we want to discuss any of the public comments that we've heard in the last two sessions? Uh, it is time for discussion, sure. Okay. Um, 
think that the reason that we did the ten year part of the policy was because that's what the s b a recommends correct and then we did a survey of a lot and that is somewhere is that anywhere that we have is that on our is that documentation of the survey of all of the different schools anywhere that is publicly available dr. Heron but the 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 various policies from the various I think that's on the board docs from a meeting a couple of meetings ago I think it was May 26 a 26 possibly so I mean I do appreciate the concerns that were brought it seems that having the 10-year rule puts us squarely in line with the majority of the other school systems in our area does anyone else have any comments about that I personally don't have any issue with a 10-year limit for naming schools that gives us plenty of time to to know more about people and because that's one of my big concerns is that we need to accurately know more about people before we name schools after them and the reason if I could just add on to that the reason that we chose not to rename the school at this time is because a because the Board of Elections has asked us to hold off and secondly the cost that has to that that's a budgeted cost and this is not something that it's something we need to take time and to do this so thanks I just wanted to make sure that the people who spoke heard our reasoning and and why we decided to go the route that we're going any other discussion I think the other other issue too as far as renaming Jane renaming Rawls bird is that we need to make sure it's appropriately vetted through the public and we get appropriate public input on all the all the options and the possibilities and that's it and that process is just going to take some time starting so that we're going to discuss the the current proposed process we're going to vote on the current proposed process so let me first thank thank staff for the adjustments including three community members at large I I think that it would be helpful to have more input I also have thought thought more about how to seek input and beyond the web page if we could have a more proactive way of doing that I know that we can send blast email out to parents but is there a possibility of asking through the Gazette the people apply or even at back to school night at Rawls bird at the parents could we could solicit names suggestions at back to school night from that community so we have a broader breadth of folks for the for the committee to decide but I think that that's the work the committee is going to come back and tell us how they're going to do that I guess that I'd be more comfortable with more opportunities than less any other discussion move in seconded for approval of the process for school renaming as presented in the superintendent's memo as amended last week Ms. Serza Mrs. Taylor aye Mrs. Young aye Dr. Beers aye Ms. Cook aye Ms. Hummel aye Ms. Minor aye Mr. Kelly aye thank you 8.02 can I get a motion to for approval of a policy of revised policy DJ purchasing Mr. Chairman I move item 80.2 revised policy DJ for purchasing there a second second it's a moving second is any discussion yes dr. beers um, I and this may have come up at the uh, work session and uh, I was absent and I apologize for that <clears throat> but I wanted I just wanted to know the rationale for jumping uh, for doubling the um, amount of a purchase that requires um, uh, board approval why well, we went from 50,000 to 100,000 Mrs. Bird is well prepared to answer that question good evening mr. chair members of the board dr. Heron 
Um, the rationale behind that was we have, have joint services with James City County, and their purchasing threshold is $100,000. The, the county administrator is able to authorize contracts up to $100,000. In addition to that, we feel that internally it would create some efficiency. There are several maintenance projects that you approve through the capital improvement plan that are 50, between 50000 and one hundred, and it requires two board meetings. So for efficiency purposes and the time that we have to squeeze those projects in over the summer, we feel like this is a step in the efficiency realm. Um, and, and the county does it anyway? I mean, that, that's their, um, they, they set the uh, limit at 100000 We are able to set it up to 100000 per state code. And yes. the James City County government, they, they're doing the same. Yes. So we're sort of in line with what Yeah, we're doing. trying to create some continuity there so they don't have to remember so many different thresholds as well. But I, I, I support that. Thank you. And there's Thanks. still there's still transparency between those numbers. Absolutely. Um, our plan is in our financial reports monthly to bring to you contracts that are signed from 25,000 to 100,000 so you're aware of what contracts have been authorized and signed. Is there any other discussion? Thank you. It's so moved and seconded to, to for acceptance of a revised, a revised policy DJ purchasing. Ms. Serza? Mrs. Young? Yes. Dr. Beers? Aye. Ms. Cook? Aye. Ms. Hummel? Aye. Ms. Minor? Aye. Mrs. Taylor? Aye. Mr. Kelly? Aye. Thank you. 8.03. Can I get a motion for approval of the fiscal year 2018 budget calendar? Mr. Chairman, I move the approval of budget uh, of item 8.03, fiscal year 2018 budget calendar. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? Just a uh, Dr. Beers. Quick, yeah, quick question. Uh, <clears throat> I know <clears throat> uh, this past spring that um, we were um, told about it, a new uh, CIP process, and, and I that we're going that uh, the superintendent was, we were going to start to use, and I, and I fully supported that. I just want to make sure that's built into this, and we're going to, you know, it didn't get left out there. It is. As a matter of fact, we have already started that process with our three community members. We have had two of our four scheduled meetings um, with the hope that on September 20th, we will have a recommendation from that committee. Okay. No. Who are the community members? Um, Van Dobson from William and Mary Facilities is the vice president. Um, crap, you would ask me that. Um, the facilities person from Colonial Williamsburg, and um, Mr. Casey Rutland from Newtown Management. He's the president of Newtown Management. Quite a variety of expertise. Any other discussion? Thank you. Thank you. I moved and seconded for. Uh, approval of 8.03 fiscal year 2018 budget calendar. Ms. Serza? Dr. Beers? Aye. Ms. Cook? Aye. Ms. Hummel? Aye. Ms. Minor? Aye. Mrs. Taylor? Aye. Mrs. Young? Aye. Mr. Kelly? Aye. Thank you. 9.01 <laughs> proposed agenda item award a contract for invitation for bid number 171115 phase 1B construction. Dr. Heron. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, this is, as you said, for the construction of the new middle school to offer the, the contract or to consider it. The design of the middle, new middle school has already been approved, and this is the bid for construction, and Mr. Snipes is here to speak to this this evening. Thank you, Mr. Snipes. Good evening, Mr. Chair, school board members. Dr. Heron, um, it's the division's intent to construct phase 1B of the James Blair Middle School on the James Blair parcel. Uh, an invitation for bid was issued on July the 15th, 2016, and the due date of those bids are August 17th, 2016. Uh, the notice of the IFB was posted on the James City County website, um, also to sent out to contractors. Uh, the, the target date to open the school, of course, is 2018, and the work under the project will consist of construction of a three-story building of about 109,000 square feet, some site work, uh, some site demolition. Um, the, there will be some alternate bid items that will be included in those. Uh, those alternate bid items are for folding partitions in what we're calling the auditoria, uh, the provider fitness room, which our other middle schools have, and to provide a whole building generator capacity. Um, the award should be, will be based on the lowest responsive and responsive bid for total base bid. Tonight we have 
Kitty Hall from the purchasing and Mr. Howard Collins from uh, Wallatart and Sadler here to answer any questions that you may have. Any questions from board members? Um, this is Young. Mr. Snipes, Hi. good evening. Good evening. It's good to see you. I hope you've had a good summer. We had a busy summer. Yes. Uh, could you just explain what the lowest responsive and responsible bid for a total base bid means? Oh, we went through that process. I'll allow Kitty Hall our purchasing, um, our share of purchasing questions. Chairman Kelly, board Good members, day. Dr. Heron. Thank you. Uh, the lowest responsive and responsible bidder is the language that's in the Virginia Public Procurement Act, which says that not only is the price the lowest, but also the bidder who is providing that price is responsive and that they have given us everything that we have asked them to provide to us and that also all of their financials are in order, all their references are included, all the documents are there, they can, they can give us a surety bond, they can, they can give us everything uh, within that bid, not only with the lowest price, but to, to demonstrate that they are responsive to what we've, we've asked for and responsible as a bidder that will be able to perform uh, the scope of what the project is. Thank you very much. Ms. Minor? Since the, have, is it appropriate to ask how many bids we receive since the closing date's tomorrow? Till tomorrow, okay. Ms. Cook? And can you remind me, were bidders pre-qualified? Yep. They were. Mr. Snipes, any other? Dr. Beers. Yes, this is more of a uh, maybe a housekeeping thing. <clears throat> I actually did spend uh, a number of hours reading the entire uh, document. <laughs> One thing that I, that I find was made it a little different, not difficult, but just more time consuming. I looked at the table of contents and I looked at the Roman numerals. There are no page numbers there. So when you have to, when you go to look for things in that construction document, You've got to literally scroll down and find Roman numeral 12. If you follow me, you understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Go back here. I'll, um, I can look at it uh, right here. There's no What's page that? number next there to no the page Roman numbers. Up in the table. So it's hard to, it, it takes time. Is use, there a reason we use there are page numbers? We use a template form in the front end and our, our bidders are used to looking at the sections. It's, it's based on uh, what we have a template for vertical construction. Okay, right. And because we insert technical specifications oftentimes from the architect engineers and other appendices right. um, and all of that is put into a PDF, I cannot alter or edit anything that the architect engineers have inserted. So it's very difficult once you put the entire document together to make the page numbers work out. So it's, it's our bidders are used to looking for the Roman numerals. Right. By, the, by those The categories. challenge is we have to approve mm -hmm. the contract. And it's hard to identify and find stuff without page numbers. That's, yeah, all, that's the, what I'm saying. The front end document, there were three um, bid books. The front end document was almost 200 pages and we had two uh, books of technical spec, altogether over a thousand pages. So there was three books of the IFB document itself plus over 300 drawings for this project. Okay, so what you're telling me, it's impossible to put page numbers into that document that we were sent? Uh, it's to possible at. to do it, but uh, most of the time the, the numbers are not going to be correct by the time you plug everything in to the PDF document, the way that we have to put the document together. Okay, but the contractors understand that. Yes. Yeah. We don't. <laughs> <laughs> I only have one more question. Mrs. Young. Okay, yes, Mr. Kelly. <laughs> Yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, I just have a, a question um, about in terms of instructional issues, we can uh, install obscure frost, frosted glass from the floor line to about three feet above the floor. What, is, that, is three feet an arbitrary number? Is that one that has been identified as the optimal height to install fr frost, frosted glass in a... That was an answer from Michael Hall, who was with Walla Todd and Sadler, and maybe, um, excuse me, Fanny Howie, and maybe uh, Mr. Collins can answer what he meant by that. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, and Dr. Heron. 
It is a uh, kind of an industry standard if you're going to change the glass and have obscure glass to a certain height and then clear glass above that. Right. Three feet is typically about what we call the sill height for the clear glass to start. It could go four feet, it can go five feet. It, it's really up for grabs, but typically we've seen it at three feet. That's kind of industry standard. Okay, that's, I just didn't know. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Some. Since I have you here at the podium, um, so just so I understand, where exactly are all of the glass walls going to be going within the classrooms? Is, you know, we have the different wings. And are the glass walls going to be um, just on the hallway side or between every class? They are on the hallways. They're between the classroom and the collaborative area, which okay. is basically the, the widened hallway. Okay, so, so in my mind, I've got a classroom and a, a solid wall. You have three solid walls. Three solid yes. walls, and then the folding glass doors are... Um, able to open up so it can be collaborative space. You could do something so you could have the entire sixth grade if they wanted to. Precisely. Are those solid walls between the classrooms also foldable? No, ma'am. No. Okay, so there's three solid immovable walls. That's correct. With the hallway side being glass. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And then, um, so I guess that design has worked well in other middle schools comparable to our demographics that are not STEM magnet schools or, um, and do we have any examples of those that? Well, the, the one middle school that, um, that we modeled this, this area of the school after is a school in Arizona that was designed by our design partner, Michael Hall with Fanning Howie. Is that Colonel Smith? Yes, it is. So that's on a military base. That's correct. We have a similar school, an elementary school at Quantico Marine Base. Another military base. We designed okay. for the Department of Defense. Um, and then we have another school in design, also a military school uh, for the, at West Point, New York, at the, at the Military Academy. And that's an elementary school. Okay. So your design firm has not done a middle school for a non-military base with these glass folding That's That's walls. correct. Our firm has not. Now, I can't speak for our design partner, Michael Hall, uh, with Fannie Howie. I believe they may have some schools that are non-military middle schools around the country, and I can get that information if you'd like. Thank you. I'd appreciate that. Welcome. Any other discussion from board members on this? So um, make sure I understand the process here. We're not approving the RFP. The, the your responses are going to, you'll get our responses tomorrow, I guess, is when they're due. Yes. And then um, that'll be evaluated at our next meeting. You'll come to us with a recommendation where we'll talk about uh, awarding the contract and then we vote on it two meetings after that? Right. You're correct. You know, the process that you just outlined is correct. Okay. And so we're, so we'll, we're voting on contract, not the RFP. Okay. We're voting on the final contract that we're going to award to someone. Yes, it's it's an it's an IFB, um, not the RFP. Okay. And can can yeah. you repeat that timeline again? So at our next at our next board meeting, which is September six six six, mm -hmm. uh, you'll bring to us um, the contract. The, uh, the uh, person you the company you would prefer that you recommend the bid go to, with your evaluation criteria, so we know who we. Um, so we can have discussion at that point. And then our next meeting, which I believe is the 20th, it's plus 14 is 20. 20. Right. Um, we will vote, you will vote. on uh, issuing a contract. Yes. Don't vote on the 6th. No. Not vote on the 6th. The 6th is discussion. This was brought forward at this point in time to allow enough discussion for it because of this item was a, was a, it was a topic. To get it, you get it in the public domain and have right. a discussion about it. Right. Right. Okay. And so the choice on the alter alternates will only take place if, if we, when we get back the final documents about where we are on financing. Yes, we, we will okay. know how much the we have left bid for documents the were. For the okay. So my next question would be of those alternates, which, which are significant for the functioning of, this, of the middle school? What, what impact if we do, can't, cannot do any of these alternates? 
Does it have an instruction? That, that will be a discussion that Dr. Heron will have with other members of cabinet in regards to which they would, because we still have some music people that would, theater people that would like to weigh in, um, especially for the auditoria because of the closing, how the auditoria will close. Um, generator capacity because the city will now have a shelter that could be used for as the uh, with the whole, whole generator, um, and as well as the fitness room, because that would create some equity between the middle schools, because the other middle schools have a fitness room. So those kind of discussions will probably occur once we find out how much we're. Once we have data to talk about. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you, right, sir. Thank Appreciate you. it. Uh, that brings us to 9.02 discussion of engaging a superintendent search firm, Mrs. Cook, or Mrs. Taylor. So um, we have James City County's Kitty Hall with us today to um, guide us through a discussion on how the options this board has uh, in terms of engaging the services of a search firm for a superintendent. Um, in short, we uh, have two options before us uh, should we choose to engage uh, a search firm. The first is called a cooperative language contract, which essentially is borrowing um, uh, an existing contract from another school division, another school division who has uh, in all likelihood recently gone through the same process. Uh, the, the, the pros of that are that um, it's quicker than an RFP process. The cons are that it's, fi it's a fixed contract. Um, and, and then the other option is to uh, issue an RFP, which um, it, it needs to be on the street for 30 days. The pros of that are this board can design a f RFP that meets its specific needs. The cons are that it uh, extends the timeline. So that's sort of the um, layman's overview, um, but Kitty is the expert. And uh, Ms. Hall, if you'd like to add to that, or I'll hand it back to... Or subtract from that. <laughs> yeah, really to that. She, she summed it up very nicely. <laughs> yes. Um, there are some existing cooperative contracts, as uh, Ms. Cook uh, has stated, uh, meaning that they have been competitively uh, solicited and awarded uh, by other organizations. VASCUP is the Association for Higher Education that we uh, use their contracts quite a bit. Uh, they're usually at the collegiate level. Um, they have contracted with three separate firms and also um, the DHRM, the uh, Commonwealth of Virginia has two cooperative contracts, so altogether there are five firms out there who are under active contract. As Ms. Cook stated, uh, they are fixed contracts. Uh, the prices are, are pretty much set in place. What that would mean is that you would be able to approach uh, any one of them or all of them to ask for them to submit to you a proposal uh, to give you ex executive search services uh, under, under that existing contract, and that would just speed up your timeline, uh, meaning that you could start with a search uh, for the next superintendent quicker. If you decide that you want to put together an RFP, uh, there are uh, multiple samples out there. There are superintendent search RFPs out there uh, that we could work up uh, for you to review samples to decide what kind of criteria you want to put in your RFP, what is it you're looking for as a superintendent in, in Williamsburg, James City County Schools. It does have to be advertised and on the street and active for 30 days. Uh, then once uh, we bring those proposals in, then we would uh, convene the evaluation committee uh, to review and evaluate those proposals, bring in the firms for interviews and so forth until you felt like you had reached a consensus and wanted to award to one of those firms. Discussion from board members? So Just a question is, I'm assuming VSBA is one of the, that fall under one of the firms that? Um, VSBA was a respondent to Norfolk Public Schools. They solicited an RFP and VSBA did provide a response and they were selected as the, the firm. So that's one of the approved providers? So is that one of the cooperative languages? No, that one has expired. That one is no longer active. Could you, could you list for us just the names, the names of the, the firms? Mm -hmm. The names of the firms, uh, Witt Kiefer, Archer Martin, Baker and Associates, Colin Bainziger and Springstead. Colin Bainziger was the firm that the county contracted with through an RFP for our recent um, county administrator search services. Okay, any other board member? 
comments? So um, one of the concerns I have is, is by state code, I have to, we have to have a superintendent, we have to vote on a superintendent in 180 days from yesterday, maybe today. I'm not sure how we actually add that. So um, if we were to do the RFP, what, what kind of a proposed timeline do you think we would be looking at? If other, other school systems that have gone through, have you, have, you had, have you had the opportunity to look at other school systems and what their timeline was? I looked at Chesterfields. Uh, they just did one recently. I believe they just um, contracted with Dr. Lane, uh, I believe in June of this year. They put their RFP out in uh, late November of 2015. So they were right up against that timeline to get him in place, assuming that they were still under the 180 day criteria too. Right, to when they were within the law. But we don't know when their superintendent left. So it's, it's not, it's the superintendent announced that he was leaving and then. Retired June 30th. Mr. Newsom retired. Oh, okay. Dr. Newsom. Got you. Um, so how do we, how do we proceed from here? Well, <clears throat> Ms. Taylor and I spoke uh, yesterday and we have, um, we are willing to commit to the board should it choose to go in the RFP direction and use you know, a couple of different school divisions. I think you just mentioned Norfolk and then Chesterfield. Um, Virginia Beach, there are others. There, um, we could use the, those RFPs as a model, and I think that Ms. Taylor and I are, are willing to work with Ms. Hall to put something together for this board to review and, uh, and get out. Uh, we could have an RFP uh, you know, in a week to 10 days, ready to be public. It, once, um, the, once the RFP is, is public, it's a public document. So, uh, um, so that's something that we would be willing to do in fairly short order if the board decides to do that. Um, or we could do the cooperative language uh, route and review those five firms that Ms. Hall um, so if we, if we do the RFP route, um, just so I get, I get timeline, at our September 6th meeting, you would have, you and Mrs. Taylor would have uh, language for a RFP for a superintendent search. For, so we, we can discuss at the six, September 6th meeting that we vote on the September 20th meeting, um, notionally speaking. So we put out, we put on the street the 21st, October 21st, we get that, get the respondents back. And then we, we review that and issue contracts sometime in November. We could we could do it that way, um, and, and I, I would I would uh, look to the board for um, for you know getting a sense of what the guidance is there. But we typically don't like the RFP we just looked at that Dr. Pierce just read. Uh, I think several of us read that was very long and had no no page numbers. Um, you know we didn't we didn't <laughs> vote on that. Um, duly and so, noted. Duly noted. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I'm just, yeah. Um, teasing, but um, so I, I think we could perhaps seek the guidance of our attorney to see if the RFP document needs action of the board or whether it can. Uh, so if so, I think we could share it around and vote on it on the sixth um, if we wanted to do that. Um, but if we don't need to vote on it, and um, so the sixth is a con is a not a work session. Six typically our first meeting it would, would be, be, a work yeah. session, right. be a work session. But if our attorney, if we don't need to take action as a board to issue an RFP, it could be done by consensus. I would, I would think we would need to get um, legal counsel for for that. But if it's something that everybody on the board agrees with, and it is a public document, right. um, the day that it's published. Let me ask Ms. Hall a couple of questions about the RFP. Is there language that you need from the school division to include in the RFP? Yes. Okay, so that is that a template that we have readily available, or are you and Ms. Taylor putting that piece together? How, how would that happen? And are there, uh, besides the school descriptive thing? I've shared some of the samples with Ms. Cook and Ms. Taylor just to kind of give them an overview of how one looks. Uh, what I would do is put some samples together and just highlight or circle the parts that I would need for the board to look at. A lot of it is boilerplate language, right. um, but the pieces and parts that would be important to this board to look at are 
what is it you're looking for this search firm to provide to you and a candidate. Um, there's some narrative in there about the school division itself. What is it about the school division that you would want an uh, interested candidate to know? And also what the evaluation criteria you would be using to evaluate these proposals that's very important and assigning those points to it. So as you're reading through that narrative and, and looking at what you want um, the, the search firm to identify in a superintendent, that kind of dovetails right into how you would construct the, the criteria for the RFP. And those are the main important parts that the that this body but would the work session would perhaps it would be if we looked at those, it would be helpful if we came to the work session with our thoughts on those particular sections for the RFP? Is it possible for us to get copies, for all of us, right. to I get think copies that's right, of yeah. the, the Norfolk, um, Chesterfield, Never. was it Virginia Beach too, the three? Uh, uh, Norfolk, Isle of Wight, <coughs> Virginia Beach. I mean, those are like, those would be three mm -hmm. representative RFPs that we could look at, right. right? And you would highlight the sections where we need to right. focus on. Right, because if yeah, you're I doing this. That, that would be helpful before you have the discussion. If you're constructing your sure. own RFP, then certainly you would want it to be specific to the needs of Our school your school division. division. Okay. At least they've already covered a lot of the things, so that yeah, it the boilerplate. maybe prompt <laughs> what has to. Well, there's boilerplate, and then there's where we need to have input. And I'd want to make sure that, you know, we, we, we have some time to think about that discussion on the 6th. But we would, but I think, I think if we're doing the RFP route, we would ask Mrs. Taylor and Mrs. Cook to come to us with, the, with what they're, to come to us with the proposed language, and that would be out the first week of September of what, what they're, what they recommend that language looks like, and then we can come from, for our RFP, and then they, we can come with comments to that, to that language. But I think it would be helpful if we all were able to read the, I didn't say that we weren't oh. going to all read it. Okay. It was right. just that we can all get it, right. but we're going to task Mrs. Taylor and Mrs. Sure. Cook to do the work to put together. <laughs> I like we're having gonna, them do the work. I like that. And yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, um, so that, and then we'll do our wordsmithing. And then we do our critiquing, right? What, our wordsmithing. wordsmithing. It's not critiquing. Is there any, um, are there any issues with showing us, um, so I know the RFP is a final document, is a public document, but backing up from that, is there any issue with um, having the parts of or potential parts of, an, of a draft RFP public before it becomes a public document. No, no, okay. So that's a that's perfectly fine for that to be a public process. You can have drafts all over the place. Okay. Yeah. Right. We're just talking about a search for a search. Correct. Right. I just <laughs> want, I just wanted to make <laughs> sure. And it doesn't get lost in the discussion. I had to think either. about that before when you said that. But yes, that's what we're looking. Okay. I just just want to make sure. So, so is that that kind of the general consensus of the board? We do, we develop the RFP. When I say we, I mean Mrs. Taylor and Mrs. Cook. Um, develop an RFP, um, yeah. and then bring to us on the sixth proposed language. Just out of curiosity, how how long are these RFPs? You talk about 300 pages for the school. I mean, no, 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 nothing even close <laughs> to that. No, nothing close. No, probably 30 conservative. 30. 30. Yeah. Yeah. And and they are numbered. <laughs> work for that. That's good work for that. Is that, is that the general consensus or what we yeah, think? And, and, and I think it's important because I, what I think I heard Ms. Hall say was that part of that is going to be what are we looking for in a superintendent. So I think that's, while there's a draft, I think that our input and consensus as a board is really critical to that RFP. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, it would be interesting to see how the other documents, how, would, how much that's really detailed because a lot of the times, I've, the search firms I've seen, the, the search firm, you hire them and then we go out and we do public comments and we get input on what the public wants to see in a superintendent. So it's not that we're making commitments now for who we want in a superintendent. And it's been done both ways. Um, done both some ways. of the uh, localities have um, solicited public input. Before the RFP. Before. The RFP. The RFP for the search firm? Mm-hmm. We haven't passed. So that's that's purely your decision. Perfect. So. so, Mr. Chair, just to make sure that Ms. Taylor and I, Ms. Taylor and I understand what the board would like to see are two to three complete RFPs from other school divisions in addition to our recommended compilation. And between that, I'm sure we will each be reaching out to you um, for your response to those two to three sample RFPs. Um, as to inform our work prior to the 6th. Is that, is that, okay. 
Yeah, I mean, I would, I would, as soon as you get the, the documents for the two or three, distribute those, um, and then we meet one on one, and obviously under under the uh, auspices of the laws that govern how we talk to each other about mm -hmm. board matters. So. Right. Right. Somewhere in our archives, do we have the last RFP from the last search? For for how we did that, I don't know. I'm not sure. Would you know? I have no memory thereof. Okay. I was I was I was a rookie. I had no idea what I was doing. Um, okay. Thank you for your help. Thank you for all of your uh, the guidance you've given us so far and. Uh, your work, I, I really appreciate the excellent support that you provide for um, us. Do you prefer those electronic files or hard copy? Or? Um, electronic would be wonderful to then distribute. In, okay. in, um, but thank you very much. You have been wonderful to work with. Really sincerely appreciate your help and uh, Absolutely past, my pleasure. present, and future. Absolutely my pleasure. And thank you, the board, for accepting the purchasing threshold limits tonight makes my life a whole lot easier. <laughs> thank you. We like to be helpful to <laughs> prevent errors. Appreciate it. Thank and you. I would be remiss if I didn't thank Mrs. Taylor and Mrs. Cook for uh, committing to that uh, good work to us. Thank you for that. Uh, that takes us to 10.01, board members' comments. Are there any comments from board members this evening? Ms. Cook? Um, I just wanted to uh, let everyone know that I had the pleasure of attending summer school graduation. Was that last week, Dr. Heron? Week before last? Week before last. Um, and it was um, a remarkable, a remarkable uh, experience and uh, program. I think what uh, struck me was that after the ceremony was over, um, a family member of one of the graduates um, talking to some of our administrators and he went on to say that um, he was so grateful to the division because they had met um, his relative, the student that graduated, where she was, um, whether she needed to gain credit online or in school or in the learning lab or over the summer, the school division stuck with her and she is, uh, she graduated and she's going to college and she's going to um, do great things, I'm certain of that. So. We have a lot to be proud of here. And also welcome, Dr. Heron. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from board members this evening? I'd just like to uh, to uh, note what Mr. B Mr. Baker said about the new teachers arriving next week. Welcome to our school system. Uh, we are very proud of it and know that you will help augment it and make our school system even that much better. Uh, the new teachers arrive for orientation next Monday on the 22nd. Uh, the rest of our staff, teaching staff, comes back in the middle of next week. I think it's the 24th on Wednesday. Uh, and uh, looking forward to the convocation next Friday. Um, it's, this, is a, this is a busy time of the year um, in any school system. In Williamsburg, James City County is no different. Our uh, bus drivers are out getting used to their routes and where they're going to be going. The custodians and the rest of the operational staff are working diligently in our buildings to get them ready for our staff and our students. They always do an exceptional job doing that and getting, completing all those summer projects. Um, Mr. Snipes takes his vacation in the winter because he doesn't get one in the summer. So um, appreciate all the great work that you guys do there. Um, thanks to all the many, many folks who work all summer long to get our schools <coughs> ready. Um, to our teachers who work all summer long to get ready for the students. And uh, our administrators and all and, and our teachers who do a lot of professional development in the summer, uh, thank you for the work that you put in, uh, the re and that is certainly seen in our results. Um, and also to our students, who I am certain have been working all summer long on their reading assignments and their other academic work, so they can be ready for the cl for their classes this uh, this uh, fall. So. Uh, we look to welcome them back. It's kind of it's kind of unbelievable. The next time that this board meets um, will be after the first day of school. So, um, where does the time and the and the uh, where does the time go? It's amazing. Um, that brings us to 11.01 .01, upcoming events. Convocation is August 26th at 8:30 at the community chapel. Uh, school liaison committee meets on September 9th at 4 o'clock in the City Council workroom at the Stryker Center. The Policy Committee meets September 13th at 1.30 in the Stryker Center in room 113. And uh, 
on September 14th, more opportunity for school board members to get uh, professional development with the VSBA Legislative Advocacy Conference in uh, Charlottesville. Uh, upcoming meetings for this board, uh, closed session September 6th at 6 o'clock at uh, room 309 in the annex at the school board office. Uh, work session September 6th, 630 um, in room 300 in the annex at the school board office. Uh, September 20th, closed session 6 o'clock here in the county building F in the work session room and then the regular meeting to follow that at 630 on September 20th in building F. And with that, have a great rest of the summer. See you in September. We are adjourned.